Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. Today we want to talk about measuring forces. Okay, so mechanical forces, we want to measure mechanical force and therefore I brought a little something that we can we can determine yeah, what, what force is causing. Yeah? Here I have something with me. This is a, a rubber band. I'm sure you know. Yeah? So here you see the rubber band and now I'm applying a force uh, and what is happening? The rubber band is changing its form. I think everybody knows this. <laughs> but let's analyze what is happening in detail. Well, there is a force applied to the rubber band. The rubber band has a certain cross section. This cross section is a uh, this force is applied to this cross section yeah? and so we can think about distributing the applied force among or above the, the whole cross section and this distributed force about uh, around a uh, cross section around an area over an area is called stress mechanical stress or also tension yeah? so i am applying a force this will cause tension in the material stress in the material and because of the stress, the material is beginning to change its form. Yeah? And if I not do it to the extreme, yeah, this process is reversible. Yeah? So we can see reversible. Reversible. <laughs> we can see it looking before and after exactly the same. Yeah? Even if I stretch it out quite a little and then book, going back looking the same. We are in elastic mode. Yeah? If I do it too much, if I apply too much force, this will not go back or rubber will even rip. Yeah? And to tell you the truth, it's not only rubber which is behaving that way. All right? It's not only rubber which is behaving that way. All materials, usual materials behave that way, that we have a certain elastic area. All right? So let's summarize those thoughts, yeah, or those things. Let's say we have some material. Here we have the material. Stick like this, yeah, there. It has a certain cross section A. It has a certain length. L0. Yeah? This is the stick. And now I apply force to the stick. Yeah? So here's the force. Of course, I have to draw it in both directions because it must be actio, reactio, and so on. Yeah? Force, force. Yeah? And here we have then a changed piece of material. This has changed now the length to the length L. So there is a certain delta L, which is actually L minus L0. Uh, so it was growing, growing. It was getting longer. Uh. This is our our findings. This is our observation uh, on all materials. So the force, force F, it is causing. Mechanical stress tension in the material. Usually, the stress is is called sigma. All right. So that we we have we have a certain stress. This is sigma. Yeah? And this is nothing more than the force F 
the applied force distributed to the whole area. Okay. So the, the unit of this thing, the unit of this thing is usual is Newton by square meter. Yeah. However, the usual is Newton by square millimeter because it's simply more, more often used. Huh? So this is the stress now. And stress sigma sigma is, is Greek letter for S. This fits perfect. Yeah? So this stress, huh? this stress is then causing the material to change its form. Yeah? The stress sigma. is causing the material to change its form. Huh? So we will change this thing is called strain. Yeah? And the strain is usually with epsilon. Yeah? And this equals Sigma, the stress, and now divided by E, yeah, oops, <laughs> E, this E, uh, E, is in, in German it's E modul, yeah, in English it's usually called Young's modul, Modulus. Yeah. This is somehow reflecting the material's property or the material's, yeah, simply the behavior of the material. Yeah. Explaining the reaction of a certain material. to stress. And, for instance, in example, uh, steel, plain steel, has an E and Young's modulus of 210,000. Yeah? What's the unit? Newton by square millimeter. Uh, here this rubber band would have around 0 0.02 or something like this. Yeah? Hey, and said, hey, this sigma has Newton per square millimeter, this E modulus has Newton per square millimeter, so for epsilon, there is no unit. How can this be? What is this epsilon? Well, the unit of epsilon, or this is actually nothing more, nothing less, than this delta L divided by the original length. So how much percent, or how much, what is the ratio of, of, of this material is getting longer? Okay, this is described by epsilon. So the, there is no unit to epsilon, to the strain. Uh, strain has no unit. Yeah, this is how a force is affecting material. Right? There are different transducers. Uh, so there are, for instance, force transducers. Uh, so if you force transducer, Or there are also weight transducers. I've misspelled this. Wait, this is how it's written. Yeah. What's the difference between those two? Yeah. They both work in the same way. Yeah. Only difference is the calibration. 
So four strands users and weight users work exactly the same way. The only difference is the calibration. This is calibrated in Newton and this is calibrated in kilograms or tons or whatever, yeah, in a weight unit. And this is measured unit. That's the only difference. Yeah? How such transducers look like? They usually look like somehow like this. Yeah? Then here they are mounted to a fixed point. Here we apply the force somewhere here. Yeah? Here is the force which is applied, or the weight which is applied, yeah? does not really matter. Like I said, the only difference is the only the calibration. Yeah? And this is bending. Yeah? This is changing its form. Usually we have here some, some special formed whatever holes inside, yeah? so that this deformation of this thing is following, is following certain rules. And the thing we are actually measuring is the strain. Yeah? So we are actually measuring the, the strain of this device yeah? which will change its form under the load. Yeah? That's how force measurement is usually working. There are a lot of different force measurement methods. Yeah? So there is, for instance, we've talked about a piezoelectric effect. Yeah? When we apply a force, we talked about force there, to a piezoelectric crystal, yeah? then we can measure some, some uh, charges at the surface. This could be used to measure the force. By far, but also here, we are actually measuring the deformation of the crystal, right? So we are measuring the strain, actually. By far, the most the widely the most widely used form of measuring uh, force strain actually is the strain gauge. Uh, how a strain gauge is working and how is it built and, and how yeah how it is used to measure the force. Uh, we will hear in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.